Uh, one question I get asked a lot is how to uh, trigger animation with an effector and there's some ways to do an espresso but uh, I'll show you some methods three methods in total of uh, how to trigger animation with uh, effectors and one method is pretty limited not a very good method but I'll show you anyway the second ones we're gonna use inheritance effector and the third one we're gonna use like a object animated with points an object with point animation so I'll start off by uh, creating a sphere just reduce the radius down slightly and I'm just gonna add some animation onto this so coordinates XYZ uh, come to frame 30 and I'm just gonna use the four viewports Actually, I might put it on frame 10, come to frame 20, position, and then just copy and paste frame 0. So I've got a kind of, actually here, I might drop it down, because I want a kind of circular animation. And I might just move these along slightly, 30 and 40, see what happens. Here, I'm just going to pull it out and kind of make it a bit more random. And I'm actually going to convert this to editable because it's a sphere, you can't really see um, if it's spinning. So I'm just going to do a kind of extrude on the faces. Create angles. Nope. Maybe it's the matrix extrude. Whoops. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Right, something like that. And just gonna keyframe some rotation, a bit more interesting. This is uh, not pretty, but just whatever gets the point across. Okay, so we've got this very strange object and a strange animation. I'm going to drop this in a cloner and put it into maybe grid array sphere and increase. Number of clones. I'm way off the screen now. The, it's pretty dense as well. Probably, it's probably going to choke the computer. But okay. So one thing we notice when we play this back is the animation has disappeared. And if you wanted to bring the animation back, you, you could hit Alt G with the sphere selected, and it's going to kind of animate them all in a big clump. But this isn't what we want. Just going to drop the sphere in there. I'm going to add an inheritance effector to the cloner. Go to the inheritance options uh, effector, and I'm going to drag and drop the sphere into object. Then I'm going to set the inheritance mode to animation and the transform space to node. So let's play that back. And they all seem to move uh, on their own little uh, path. Can't really see it well here. And I'm just going to add a fall off linear right in the middle there. Let's see what happens. So basically, I'm just going to invert fall off. Now, see, this is one way to trigger uh, animation is using a fall off with the inheritance effector with the settings I showed you. So I'm just going to animate this uh, fall off. Z, and then drag it over here. Z. Invert, and as you can see, whoop, the animation only triggers when the fall off touches it. It's pretty ugly, actually. <laughs> Should be some more separation between the objects. Oh yeah, they're not very random, are they? So I think I'll add in a random effector preceding the inheritance effector, just to scatter them around a bit. Uh, yep. Definitely needs to be more organic. 
Okay, now let's see what happens. There we go, that's a bit more interesting. It's so basically the animation's getting triggered on a impact with the linear effector. Something that kind of sometimes helps is the linear effector. If you just rotate it slightly, it gives it a kind of less rigid uh, flow. And we can play with the weight and fall off and, uh, and what happens if you increase the weight beyond uh, 100. Let's have a look. Yeah, so anyway, this could be anything. But the problem is, with this method is, let's just delete inheritance and delete this object, delete clone or even. <clears throat> Let's say I've got this cube. I'm just going to put it into vertex mode. I mean, make it editable. And I'm going to add a point animation to this. So, you see, I've got the. I'm just going to click the point uh, option here. And then every time I keyframe, it's going to consider the points as well. And I'm just going to shrink down the top here keyframe that so we've got a point animation happening then I'm going to go back to frame 20 make it like this shape maybe then go to frame 30 make it this shape then just copy and paste to zero so it go, goes back to the original so anyway this is quite a cheap kind of little animation but we're only studying theory here so and if I drop this cube in the cloner as before and I'm actually just going to scatter them linear make a few of them in the previous example the animation stopped but with point point space animation uh, there's no way we can stop the animation as we did previously so I'm just gonna set the form shading to zero so it looks less glitchy there we go the, the inheritance effector method doesn't seem to work here if it's an uh, object with some point based animation or any other kind of animation if we just add the inheritance effector again we do exactly what we did set it to animation drag and drop the cube and let's see what happens but yeah that animation just continues regardless it's just ignoring and uh, I'll try and set the start and end points and it just ignores everything in here fall off based make it direct what happens so the, this that technique I I first explained doesn't seem to work here and if anyone has a solution let me know And I know I know a, a method of using Expresso to detect like collision. So in Expresso you can create another object like a cube. I'll just make that big. And then that that's basically your effector, and then you kind of detect collisions, which then triggers animation, and it's quite complicated. But what I'm gonna show you in part two is like a just a purely MoGraph and effector based solution to this problem. But I'll show you a quick cheap way around this. And this isn't ideal, but it kind of gets the job done in some cases. So we'll just go back to cloner and add a plane effector. Yep, just boring old plane effector. And I go to parameter and just turn off position and all that. And set the time offset to a, a value greater than the timeline. So I'm, I've got 120 frames, so I'm gonna set it to 120. Let's hit play. As you can see, it's managed to stop dead all the animation on the cloners, which is a good first step. The problem is then trying to like trigger this animation and getting it to look good. So if I had a linear fall off right in the middle here, let's see what happens. And as you can see, it's basically triggered the animation for uh, the cloners beyond it, but the cloners before it are still uh, frozen, which is and at this point you probably think oh yeah so just kind of animate the effector that's job done 
And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work that way. I'm just going to set a simple animation for the effector. It kind of works, but it's not very elegant. I'm just going to hit invert here. As you can see, it kind of almost works. I'm just going to hide the plane effector. But it's got a lot of problems. And I tried playing with the fall off. But uh, the results are very flaky. Tried unchecking fix clone. As you can see, it's kind of glitchy. It'd be nice, like theoretically, it should work, but it just doesn't uh, play with the weight. It's a bit strange. So, um, if anyone can, if anyone can crack it, let me know. I think there there is a way to. Um, there is a way, some option to kind of make this method workable, but I just can't. I just can't find it at this point. Deformer. Transform space effector. Yeah. It's a shame, because it kind of should be that simple. But anyway, in part uh, two, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem using a completely different method. So uh, stay tuned, thanks for watching.